fellas, we might be back. But we could always be more back, and I have a few suggestions on how to get as back as possible. Clearly, my video on how to fix Payday 3's armor was the only reason they are changing the system, so I'm gonna do it again and talk about some of the biggest remaining issues, and I will be the only reason they get fixed. However, before we get to the big problems, let's quickly go over the boring obvious problems. More heist good, me like more heist, but me prefer new heist over old heist. The legacy heists are good, but if I really want to play, say, Golden Grin, I would just play Golden Grin in Payday 2. I'd rather take the same heist concept and flesh it out more, like how Diamond District is basically an expanded upon version of Jewelry Store, Diamond Store, and Four Stores. I think where Legacy Heists are at their best is Stealth, because of how different Payday 3 Stealth is to Payday 2. Even though Cook-Off was more changed than Murky, I mean Turbid Station, the latter feels more different and unique because Stealth in Payday 3 feels way different than it does in Payday 2, especially when you compare how different Loud is from 3 to 2. However, there is a missed opportunity in adding a Loud version to Turbid Station. Stealth focus heists can be primarily designed for stealth while still allowing loud, such as Rock the Cradle's Crypto Key only being accessible in stealth. Even Launch Payday 2 had heist design like this, the big stealth heist on Launch Framing Frame punished you for going loud but still let you do it. You had the ambush on day 2 and the gold was locked off in day 3, but the heist still had a loud version. Whenever Shatterade gets eventually added to Payday 3, please make a loud version, and I don't mean Meltdown. It can still be stealth focused and punish the players for going loud, like locking off the vault and having a really hard escape or something, but having it also have a loud version would make it feel like a remake was actually deserved. Oh, and add more RNG elements to all the heists to make them more replayable. That has been said a lot, but it needs to be said how samey the heists feel a lot of the time. As for guns, just like, add more. Crazy idea, I know. Personally, some guns that I would want to see are weapons like the FAL, UMP, KSG, and at least one secondary shotgun. For overkill weapons, add an auto shotgun of some sorts, maybe with a special ammo type like HE or incendiary, and at least one suppressed overkill weapon for assassin synergy. Also, add some skills that actually interact with the system, like letting you keep your Opaku weapon on you instead of dropping it or removing the speed penalty for holding them. Melee weapons are probably going to be added at some point, but I would like it if they were more interesting than just swing and they deal damage. I think a cool thing would be like an alt fire heavy attack type thing where you charge up a lunge into a melee takedown animation. I think that'd be pretty cool. The animation team has already proven they are amazing at their job and they could go crazy making a bunch of really cool takedown animations. Additionally, when melee weapons come out, there should be skills that interact with these takedowns like dropping armor kits or first aid kits when you take down a special or something and letting you go into a human shield from a melee attack. Another thing that needs to change is the frequency of hotfixes. There's usually something broken in every update that is usually a very simple change, like how before the last update, this door on Diamond Strike was broken and that bug was in the game for like over a month. On the current update, the jackknife pistol doesn't have audio when you reload it. Bugs like these should be fixed with a quick hawk fix and shouldn't be too hard to patch, but I know Sony and Microsoft are at least partially responsible for the slow rate of updates, but other games are able to quickly patch stuff out, so whatever the updating process is at Starbreeze, it needs updating. Wow, the updates need updating? Okay, those were some changes that I would like to see that are not the two main big changes I want to discuss in this video. The first of these two big, large changes is the skill system. Everyone is saying the skill system needs a rework, but no one is really proposing anything. The closest anyone gets is just saying, do Payday 2's skill system again, which, hot take, is not good. Maybe it's because of how long the game has been out, but the meta has eliminated all build diversity, and the only difference in what builds is your perk deck, and even then only like 5 of them see play ever. 
I have a few proposed changes that I think could work better than the current skill system. So the first thing, I need to say this, no matter what, do not add perk decks. Payday 3 already has on paper a better perk deck system, where they're less impactful, but you can mix and match them to get what you want instead of every game just being only the top tier decks. I like the idea of the skill line system, there just needs to be more of them and they need to be better balanced. The main issue with the current skill system is lack of variety. There are only really two builds, the Adaptive Armor build with Ammo Funnel, or the Assassin build with Ammo Funnel. The problem isn't that these builds are bad or like too good, it's just that they're the only builds. Before Assassin was added, there was only one build. So if we add more skill lines that can either help you not die or kill more, there will be more builds that will be available as more options are added. The other issue with the current skill system is how micromanagement heavy it is. The optimal build trademark requires you to have edge and goon, I mean grit, active at all times, and the best way to keep this up at all times is to reload with combat reload, which is annoying to shoot once to reload every like 20 seconds. So this theoretical rework skill system needs to address these two big issues, that being the lack of build diversity and the annoying micromanagement. I don't think a gigantic overhaul that removes skill lines and makes a generic skill tree would be as good. I think it'd be better to take what we already have and improve it, like what was done with the armor rework, instead of just scrapping everything entirely. My suggestion for how to fix the skill system is this. Have edge, grit, and rush stack multiple times and have multiple charges. For example, Enforcer gives you grit for killing two enemies in close range. If you already have grit and you kill two enemies in close range, you get a second stack of grit. Obviously, the numbers for each stack should be less, say it's only 5% per stack instead of 10%, and you only cap at like 5 stacks of grit max. When the 20 second duration ends, instead of all stacks of the buff going away, it goes from say 4 stacks to 3. This would reduce the annoying micromanagement gameplay, as your skills only require you to have at least one stack, so it's fine if you lose a stack or two, as long as you keep generating new stacks. Additionally, this would make skills like Pin Polar, Move and Cover, and any future skills that consume a buff be better, as instead of deleting your grit, it just takes one grit, as right now it's not worth it to lose your grit for this minor effect. Existing skills would need to change to accommodate this change, but I think a rework like this would make future skill interactions a lot more interesting. I do like the idea of consuming a buff to do a thing, but the current skill system punishes you way too much for getting rid of your buffs. They can also add a new big skills that consume many stacks of a buff for a big effect, as well as other skills that can increase the cap of how many of a certain buff you can have. So let's say, take the perk Last Stand for example. It consumes all of your grit when you go down, and say, it gives you 3 seconds of a vulnerability per stack of grit consumed. Hey, editing Bob Feet here, so uh, I'm just watching back while editing this, and I had another realization about how the stacking buff system is actually, like, perfect and can fix the game. So, a while ago, there was this really good video put out by Banana about the potential issues of the new Armor 2.0 system, and he brings up how Played Up and Hardy will break the game if they work with the new shield armor. But I think that this new skill system I'm proposing has a perfect solution. It'll alter how these skills work with shields, and because of the way that I'm proposing this like stacking buff instead of just one stack of grit, it'll make the game actually feel a lot better instead of just annoying. So for played up, if it heals a shield chunk, it will consume a stack of grit instead of just requiring you to have a stack of grit. For hardy, it would only trigger if your shield plate is your last plate, it'll only give that immunity uh, on a shield plate breaking if it's your last plate. And for it to trigger, it requires and will consume a stack of grit. Uh, because this new system I'm proposing is all about like getting at spending stacks instead of just maintaining your one stack, this will make shield armor like a lot more active and require you to generate a lot more grit to stay alive when you compare it to other armor because uh, shield armor doesn't spend a resource. So I think that this new system of having stacking buffs is perfect for shields. Each skill that gives a buff should also have a cap on how many times it can give you that buff to incentivize using more than just one buff source. For example, Assassin is a super easy source of rush, and it's like the easiest source of rush for loud, so you can only get like say, two stacks of rush from this skill, but if you combine it with other sources of rush, like Escapist or Transporter, you can get up to your max stack of five. Skills like Combat Reload won't give you another stack, but will refresh your current timer on your stacks. Maybe getting a new buff also refreshing the entire stack might make refresh skills obsolete, so when you get a new stack, it can only give you like a couple seconds, or not even refresh it at all because you effectively get 20 more seconds on the buff uptime. 
Oh, and make the buffs actually color-coded without mods, and make the skill UI better, and let us sort skills by tags, like what buffs they generate and consume, or things like intended playstyles, and a search bar that searches for the names of skills as well as words in the description. So that was my proposed rework to the skill system, which was one of the two things I wanted to talk about. And by looking at the runtime of this video, you can tell I have much more to say about the second topic. And while you're down there, you might as well fix this chart. Please, I love you forever. Other than the skill rework, the other main thing that needs to change is something that I don't really see talked about that much, and that is the enemy variety. After playing a lot of Resmod and somewhat recently getting into Warhammer Darktide, I have realized something that makes these games so fun and replayable, and that is the enemy variety, both individuals and gameplay. To understand what I mean, let's look at Left 4 Dead, the grandfather of all four-player co-op horse shooters with special enemies. You can probably name all the special infected, right? Even with the new ones added in Left 4 Dead 2, it's pretty easy. Jockey, Hunter, Smoker, Spitter, Charger, Boomer, Witch, Tank. You can also probably name all the specials in Payday 2. Shield, Taser, Cloaker, Medic, Dozer, Sniper. And even with the variants, there aren't that many, like Marshall Shield and Marshall Marksman, Black Dozer, School Dozer, Minigun Dozer, and also like Medic Dozer. Now let's look at all the specials in ResMod. If I remember all of them correctly, we have Titan SWAT, ASU, Veteran, Taser, Titan Taser, Medic, LPF, Shield, Titan Shield, Sniper, Titan Sniper, Cloaker, Titan Cloaker, Grenadier, Green Dozer, Black Dozer, Minigun Dozer, Bravo Dozer, Medic Dozer, Titan Dozer, and probably a couple other variants that I'm forgetting. And that's not even mentioning the Captains and their unique units. Like I said earlier, I've been playing Warhammer Darktide recently, and there are so many specials in that game that I'm not even going to try to name them all. But important thing to note with them, is how there are a lot of variants of each type, like the Scab Gunner and the Dreg Gunner, Tox Flamer and Dreg Flamer, and so on. I think Payday 3 would benefit from not only more enemy types, but adding variants of each special as well. And I have some suggestions. Also, with these special variants, the special spawn rate should be much higher, and the max amount that should be allowed at once should be more, as right now there are only like 1 in every 15 enemies, and there's only like a max of 1 at a time. Personally, I think there should be like 3 naders and 3 zappers allowed out at once, and even more on higher difficulties. The combat duo modifier just makes the game more fun because you're shooting something other than the same cops over and over. First of all, for new specials, I have a few ideas. I do really like the techie, and I think adding more specials like the techie would make the game more interesting than shooting hordes of the same brainless cops. First is obviously the return of the medic from Payday 2. Next is what I call the veteran, who is a highly skilled standard unit, and they throw a lot of grenades, they dodge a lot, and they buff nearby units. Next is the canine unit, who has a pack of dogs that can charge you and pin you down, similar to the cloakers. Instead of hiding, they rush you as a pack and are individually weak. These are just a couple ideas for new specials, so let me know in the comments how you feel about these, as well as other suggestions for new specials. Now, I wasn't very clear on how exactly these specials work, and that's because I want to get into special variants. There should be at least one variant of every specials, and I have a few ideas for some. The different variants should have a different color palette as well as a different model of different gear, like a green zapper and a yellow zapper, a green nader and a red nader, and so on. First of all, the zapper has the current version and an elite version that instead of charging up their taser, they charge their gun, and when it hit you, they hinder your move speed. Also, there could be like a third zapper variant that is focused on the traps, and then you move the trap ability from the normal zapper and have this one be the trapper zapper, and they just focus on setting a bunch of traps everywhere, and are more active about setting traps in areas that actually have combat and not just barren areas. Next is the shield, which has some pretty easy variants. First is the current default shield, but I would say buff this unit by giving them a better gun. And that is because the next variant, the riot shield, has the flashbang ability from that one modifier, but it blinds you like four times as fast, and to balance this, their gun is worse than the normal shield's gun. Finally is the support shield, who has a larger, more resistant shield that cannot have its visor broken, but they do not have a gun. They stick with their squad and will focus on protecting them rather than hunting you down. If they are alone, they will retreat to group up with more cops to start supporting them instead. Think Monty from Rainbow Six. They can be countered by grenades, as they will use their shield to block like normal shields, and overkill weapons can easily overpower them. Next is the Sniper, and in addition to the normal version, add a boots on the ground version that has a DMR, like the Martial Marksman. Very simple, moving on. Next is the Medic, who has three versions. The normal version acts like the Payday 2 Medic. If a cop dies close to them, the Medic heals them. If the Medic is staggered at all, they cannot heal, so suppressing fire from large weapons can disrupt their healing. Next is the Overhealer Medic, who doesn't revive, but instead heals all nearby cops and gives them either overhealth or damage reduction but does not provide these buffs to themselves. 
This medic variant and the next version should drop a first aid kit on death. I don't think the normal version should, as they should be decently common unlike techies and dozers, while the overhealer and this third variant should be more rare. The third variant is the high value unit support HVUS unit that sticks to high priority cops like dozers and captains and exists solely to heal them and support them. You might be thinking, captains, what? <laughs> don't worry, I'll get to that. Next is the Nader, and I have a few ideas. First is the normal version that focuses on tear gas. This one should be recolored to be green instead of red, as the red one will be a different version. Next is a flashbang one that will be yellow, and yes, I know that Naders both use flashes and tear gas, but I think it'd be better to split them into different variants that focus on their respective grenade type and use it more frequently. As it stands right now, Naders rarely ever use their ability, which is something that all specials should do more often. Their abilities are what make them unique, so they should actually use them. Next is the Smoke Grenade Nader, who is grey, and they have special smoke grenades that remove marks from cops, so they make it so you actually can't see through the smoke. Now, these next two variants might not fit a police force very well, so instead, these two variants could be exclusive to a future PMC-type faction, such as if Murky Water comes back. I think having a couple variants that are exclusive to a faction, while having the base enemy type consistent through all factions, is a pretty cool idea. These two types are the Orange Incendiary Bomber and a Red Frag Bomber. Like I said, it might not make sense for these to be police units, but would make more sense as a mercenary faction. Or hey, maybe these are Gensec units that have special rules of engagement or something that lets them use these in populated areas. Maybe they only show up if there are no more hostages or civilians on the map after an assault or two. Now the techie, I want to split up their two drone types into two different techie types, the damage drone techie and the debuff drone techie, and maybe a third spotter drone techie who make cops immune to being flanked or something. I would allow two techies to be active at once, but they just can't be the same type. I would also buff the debuff drones somehow, as currently they are super weak and are just easier to deal with than the drones that actually shoot you. So having a techie variant that is only just the buff remover drones would need to be buffed to compete with the damage one. Next is the veteran, who would probably just have like different weapon types, like a rifle version, a shotgun version, and an akimbo pistol version. Maybe what gun they use determines what buff they give to nearby cops. The only real variant I could think of for the canine unit was an armored dog squad where the pack of dogs is smaller in numbers but they have armor so they take more shots before going down. Now the cloaker, who in addition to the normal variant has a hider variant who focuses on hiding to ambush heisters rather than just charging at them. And then the saboteur variant whose primary goal is to sabotage the objective and destroy the deployables like the saddle squad. And they have the same color palette as the saddle squad, they're like a saddle squad cloaker. Next is the dozer, and the dozer variants are mostly just down to weapon types and amount of armor. There could be, say, a dozer with a pump shotgun instead of an auto shotgun, and is faster, but has less armor. Obviously the skull dozer should return, and should probably be exclusive to the hardest difficulty. You can also get quirky and add dozer versions of most specials, like the medic dozer, but also a zapper dozer, nader dozer, or even a sniper dozer could be interesting. The sniper dozer wouldn't just sit in the back, they would go in like normal dozers, they would just have a marksman weapon instead of a shotgun. And finally is the Captains. This is something I really want, as a boss enemies is something that Payday 2 struggled with a lot. The tank is super iconic to Left 4 Dead, and the multiple bosses that could show up in both Resmod and Dark Tide have made me really want a similar boss system in Payday 3. And they can also exist to make the FBI van less of a joke. A Captain spawns at the same time as the FBI van, and the FBI van cannot be destroyed until the Captain is defeated. Each Captain is basically a super version of a normal special, and spawns with their own squad of said special type to help assist them. For example, the first Captain I want to discuss is the return of Mr. Neville Winters. Instead of sitting in a corner of the map and doing nothing, he instead rushes you down with a squad of shields. Captains could also be unkillable like in Payday 2, where they retreat when they just get to low health, and when they retreat, the FBI van becomes vulnerable. All captains should drop some resources when de defeated. I think it would be cool if the captains had like a boss health bar that shows up at the top of the screen, where their health is divided into chunks that gate off damage to prevent them from just being one shot. Each health chunk of loss makes them drop either an armor repair kit or a fish aid kit or something, and they enter a new phase where they do a short little taunt animation where they are invincible during said taunt. Each captain could have a different amount of phases. For Winters, he'd probably just have like three phases. First one acts like a normal squad of shields. Phase two begins a charge attack like dozers. And then in the third phase, his shield will break and he starts healing like an overhealer medic. When a captain is fully defeated, they should drop a full armor plate and not just an armor repair kit. The new captains I will discuss that aren't Winters have really stupid names and are just like souped up versions of normal specials. These are a few ideas and I would love to hear your ideas for boss captains in the comments. 
First up is John Juggernaut, the Super Dozer, who has a minigun and spawns with a squad of special HVUS medics to protect him. These medics will only kill the captain, not each other, so you have to take them out first. Sniper Sam is an armored sniper who moves between vantage points and specific map choke points. When he loses a health chunk, he drops a smoke bomb and teleports to a different vantage point to snipe from. He has pretty good armor, so he can take some shots, but he gets staggered from damage very easily. He spawns with a squad of cloakers to disrupt you to try to get some cheeky snipes off on a disoriented team. Next is Dr. Dave, who is a super medic that acts as a reviver medic and an overheal medic at the same time, and also has passive health regen that can heal him up if he doesn't take damage for a bit. He would spawn with some other medics probably, and he would drop a full first aid kit like the ones from medic bags rather than an armor plate when he dies. Next is Sergeant Soldier, who is a super veteran that just buffs all cops damage, damage resistance, and reaction speed and stuff while active. He spawns with his own HVSU medic and two shields that can be any shield variant, and each phase he goes through just makes his buff stronger or something. Finally is Specialist Sally, who is the super cloaker. Taking inspiration from Captain Autumn from Resmod, her arrival is not announced, and she hides near the objective of crawling on walls and ceilings and waits for the heisters to make her attack. She has a drop attack where she jumps from her hiding spot that can incapacitate like a normal cloaker, and then she will start to put cuffs on her victim, but she can be shot off to prevent this instant down. She doesn't like to be in the open, and will throw a lot of flashbangs and smoke grenades when out in the open to try to get back to another hiding spot. She will also sabotage objectives like sabo cloakers, and will spawn with both sabo cloakers and hiding cloakers. To make up for her agility, she has the least health of all the captains. These are just some suggestions, and I want to hear feedback on what you think about these captains and other ideas you have as well. Hi, editing me here again. Uh, I forgot another really cool idea for the captains, and that is like a special challenge for if you defeat the same captain, say, 10 times, you get a special weapon preset that is their weapon. I think that adding a little reward like this would be really cool, as it's not only more characterization for the captains, but it's also just another little thing to work towards. I really like the idea of these special boss enemies, and I think adding randomness for which one spawns would also add more replayability, along with just more specials also adding more replayability. As it stands right now, specials are so rare and so unimpactful that the game is shooting the same identical groups of SWAT until they become slightly more tanky but still look basically the same. Adding more variety in what the normal units look like, like different helmets or vests, different variety in colors and patterns, would make the game feel less samey. The modifier that doubles special spawns makes the game way more fun, and I think upping the special cap to like 10, and adding a bunch more specials that could show up with a bunch of different abilities, and a bunch of variants for each of those specials, would make the game feel a lot more replayable. Even if the heist is the same every time, the enemies aren't. Obviously more heist variety would also be good, but some heist would just like have to be entirely remade to accommodate for more RNG variation. So changing the enemies instead of the heist is a solution that can work no matter the map. So those were my proposed changes to make Payday 3 the game it should be. With rework skill system and more enemy types, the game will feel way more interesting enough to actually play long term rather than just playing a heist or two every time an update drops. I want this game to succeed and make a No Man's Sky-like comeback. I love this franchise and I don't want it to have a bad reputation. I want what is best for this game, and if you're watching this far, you probably do too. Leave your suggestions for what this game needs in the comments, and while you're there, like and subscribe and stuff. I want these videos to get more traction, and spread the word of what this game truly needs to become the greatest heisting fantasy of all.